Hello friends, Tanya here with another video for Trinity Stamps. Today I am excited to share with you the release of the Summer Blooms Kit. In this kit is in, um, included a stamp set with coordinating dies and a pack of, I believe it's six by eight inch pattern paper in this lovely rainbow hue. I It also comes with four small ink pads. I have a release video of that. I will, if this is on my channel, I'll have it linked below. I'm also using the mini slimline dainty scallop edge dies. In this particular video here are those little ink cubes that come with it there are four and we're going to do some no line watercoloring but first we're gonna spatter all over this dainty scallop edge panel we're going to use this in the center of our card kind of a grounding item on the pattern paper to break up the busyness of that beautiful rainbow striped pattern I've taken each of those squares of color and squished them onto this piece of acetate that is from packaging from another product. I keep it on my desk as a paint palette and I've added a little water to each of those colors and using my paintbrush, I'm spattering them all over the paper. I also am taking a piece of watercolor paper. This is just some cheap stuff I have in my stash that just frankly needs to be used up. So it's not the highest quality, but we're still gonna get a beautiful flower out of this. I'm taking the included ink pad or ink spot of the fade out ink, which has been notoriously difficult to get our hands on. No line watercoloring is super popular. I have not dabbed my toe into that very much because I just don't feel confident in it. But this ink makes it easy. It takes on the color that you paint over it. I'm starting out with the green here and this is the ink on three green goddess or goddess green. Hmm, one of those two. It is those two words and I am using it to paint the leaves. I added a little too much water to it and diluted it out and one of the amazing qualities of the ink on three ink is that whatever intensity that ink is when you put it on your paper, it doesn't fade back. That's the color you're going to get. I love that. There's no second guessing. You don't end up putting second layers on that you didn't intend. When you get your finished product, it looks like when you were creating it. I love that. You can see the uh, fade out ink took on the property of that green, made it a little more intense and those leaves all just pop. I did mix the green with some orange and a little bit of pink because I wanted an olive green. So you can take your inks that you have and mix them to create colors that coordinate with your, your project, but more than just the colors that they are separately. It does help to know, understand a little bit of color theory so that you can get easily the colors that you're looking for. So green and red are opposite on the color wheel. So they're going to create brown if you mix them. And an olive green has a little bit of a brown tone to it and a little bit of a yellow tone. So you wanna add that orange in there to add the little bit of a yellow undertone to it. And the second time I mixed this color, I really liked it better. So I went back over the stuff I had already painted to get the color I really wanted. The fade out ink is taking on the color that I'm painting over it yet again. And that is a solid image that's stamped and it is super easy to go ahead and paint this. I did speed this up to twice the uh, speed that I normally paint. So it didn't take me, or it did take me twice as long as you are seeing to create this image. But I was not being super careful. As you can see, I was pretty much just slapping the color on. I wasn't, even on this large full flower, which I am, I'm wanting the background flower to be a little lighter than the top flower. So I have diluted that orange quite a lot and I'm just slapping down a layer of the light orange over the uh, 
large bloom in the background. Then I'm going to come back and darken it up just a little bit. I'm kind of following the inner pe petal lines, but not, not really. <laughs> just, I think I started out doing that and then decided to heck with that and ap applied the color to the whole flower, wanting it to be a little darker. And then I do dab in just little drops of the paint or ink to let it do what it do. <laughs> letting it be rather organic. I do go back and add that to the other. Why am I making two blooms? Because I want two on the front of the card and I want them to be fairly similar. So I'm doing them both at the same time. That does save time in the long run because you aren't remixing and retrying to figure out how you did it on the other bloom. I'm adding a little more orange and pink to the palette and I'm going to mix these to get a corally color and I am going to paint the small five petal flowers that are in these clusters with that color. I'm just going to go through and paint all four of them at the same time. You can again see the fade out ink taking on the property of whatever color you're painting on top of it, which makes this super easy to do no line coloring. You could be so much more intricate than I am on these. You could take your time and use some smaller brushes, do more drying time between, use that uh, nooks and crannies method where you come back and just darken the nooks and crannies to add more depth and detail. You could do this as detailed as you want. You could take a rainbow of color and paint each of those petals a different color on the large rows. The possibilities are endless. I think that's why florals are so popular because your freedom in color choice and method of coloring is so wide. It's, it's just one of the most versatile type of image, anything natural or organic, has a little more freedom. I do really love this kit in that it's all color coordinated. All of the pattern papers coordinate with the ink pads that were provided and it really helps make this kit easy to use. I do love that they included that fade out ink because I haven't been able to get my hands on it. I know other people have used things like the antique linen ink from Tim Holtz and I did try that myself, but it doesn't do the same things that this fade out ink does. I might have to get that in a full size pad whenever I can get my hands on it. <laughs> These last pieces. Um, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be berries or another kind of foliage or a bloom. I'm making them bright pink because I think that adds some balance to this balance and cohesion to this floral image. I think it's adorable. We're just going to add a little bit of darkening pink in the center of the five petal flowers and on the in, inside bottom edge of the berries or flowers or whatever we're going to call those going to pick up what little I, of that olive green that I mixed is left on the uh, palette and add the stems to those round pieces. I did set this panel aside to let it dry naturally. Yes, shocking, I did not use my heat gun. Next, I take some low tack tape and it's uh, secure the coordinating die in place and then I will go die cut each of those flower blooms and we're going to do a little dry fitting of where we want these pieces on the card. I do need to trim off the ends of that um, dainty scallop mini slimline piece that I use, or am planning to use for the center. And when I come back, I think it just is not popping enough off of the pattern paper. It's just too um, light. So I pull out some painter's tape and mask off a small portion of the dainty scallop 
with a just a little bit of the white showing from the main body of the die cut. And I'm going to do th both sides. And I'm ink blending a little bit of the pink, the sweet petunia pink, onto that scallop. And I think it really makes it pop a lot better on the panel. That pink is, n is almost the same color as that red. It's in definitely in the same tone <clears throat> or hue. I think that's called hue <laughs> and then tone would be the intensity of it. And I quickly peel that off. You see me wipe it with a towel so I don't smear ink anywhere else. I did adhere some coaster blank on the back of the piece of pattern paper. You could either use the modern embossed A7 rectangles to die cut that or because I was trying to limit what I was using so that it would be just what was in the kit content. Um, I did use one other die set. I wanted to limit the products I used. So I did cut that to four and a half by six and a half. And I'm adhering all of these pieces to the card base, which is a five by seven or an A7 card base. And using uh, two layers of coaster blank behind one portion of the flower bunch that's hanging over the dainty scalloped panel that we created. I am really loving how the spatters on the center panel make that blend in or coordinate with the watercolored flowers. Next, the gems that come in the Summer Blooms kit are called Summer Sparkles. They're all of these iridescent gems that come in four different colors here. I'm showing you the largest of each color and there are three or four sizes in each color. I love them. I am using the heck out of these things. I don't know how long they're going to last me because I've put a bunch on several cards already. I'm only showing you one card today. I have a few more coming up. Just going to add a little dab of the Barely Arts Precision Glue to secure each of these little gems. They are so cute. I don't even have to plan really. I don't try to separate what color is going where. I just scatter them with abandon. <laughs> now this past month, hmm, I think this is from the June release. This is the big celebrate foil and cut. And I have gobs of these already foiled and cut and in my bag, in the back of the bag that I'm keeping the, or the envelope, I'm keeping the dies and foil plates in. This one only partially foiled, but I really love the shabby chic look that that created. And it goes perfect with these no line watercolored flowers. I did do the same process for this little mini flower bunch and die cut that and put it on the inside of the card. Then, I took out the A7 envelope builder die set and created a coordinating envelope. And I'm taking it one step further by stamping the rose on the envelope also, or the, sorry, the flower bunch. I am using the sweet petunia pink and I'm putting this in my Misty to get a good image because you don't want to go to all that work of creating a beautiful envelope, which FYI, I also used my, um, this is paper that I custom colored using my uh, gel press plate. So I'd already put a little bit of time into this envelope. So I'm using the Misty to make sure I get good solid images. This way I can stamp it again if it's only a partial image. That is my completed card and envelope. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, please check that description box below. If you aren't subscribed to this channel, now's a perfect time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you liked it, please click the like button and check out a couple videos that we've linked here for you to enjoy. Until next time, bye-bye.